Welcome to another Pandora's Box tutorial by Pixel Wizard. Today we're going to talk about the general UI. So the user interface starts like this when you start a new project. And you'll notice that it's comprised of windows that are populated by tabs. Now the tabs that are open by default are the ones we use most often. You can choose which tab you want to see and you can also move a tab from one place to another for the most part uh, some of them are anchored the project tab is always anchored and the device tab and the sequence tab are always anchored however these are also probably the most important ones now if you accidentally close a tab by hitting the X button on that tab uh, it would disappear but do not fret all the tabs including ones that are not open by default some very cool ones are in here uh, under the tabs drop down where you can then reopen any tab that you may have closed so some of the most important tabs the project tab holds all your assets the asset tab browses all the computers running Pandora's box the device tab is your device tree of all the devices that you're going to control. The inspector inspects anything you click on and it gives you basically properties and options for whatever you click on. Live by the inspector. The sequence tab is going to hold your timeline. Obviously the device controls are going to hold all your parameters for your different devices. Your global preview tab is going to be for offline and rendering so you can visually see what is going on and then of course another one that's there uh, that you should know about is of course the configuration tab which holds all sorts of great defaults and um, configurations and how to work with ASIO uh, for example how to work with remote control protocols so dive into that configuration tab and, and become familiar with that uh, also thumbnails is of course a good one uh, so we can just browse our stock 3D primitives. All Pandora's box installers come with a stock assets folder, and that stock assets folder is going to have all sorts of lovely uh, geometry, colors, audio test files, uh, test patterns for you to use in your projects, and that's always there on all machines. Another thing you can do is you can also move around these windows by simply grabbing and left click and dragging the bars in between like I am here um, you can even save these view spaces uh, once you've designed how your workspace should look by simply right clicking views and hitting create view and you can go ahead and name those views as well we'll say this is our show view you may have a view that's mostly timeline, you may have a view that's mostly thumbnails, you may have a view that is mostly preview. So for example in here, if we activate our toggle preview and we put a piece of content up on a layer, probably one of my favorite tabs that I recommend using in every show environment is the device viewer because it really shows you what's happening on all the layers as you can see you can see different clips on different layers here um, it's just a great overview of what the server is doing it depends on which device you have selected as you can see here this is a great tab now if you start running out of space you can see how a high resolution uh, manager or master monitor would be very important. Now what you can do is you can divide up these views by inserting panes. You can right click any mullion here and say insert pane and then you can drag tabs around to make this look any which way you want. I really like this. You can even divide tabs here. Split pane vertically, keep tabs left. So this might be a a typical view here one of the cool things about the effects tab is the documentation that's built into it now so if you look at any effect you'll actually see uh, what that effect does some thumbnails and what each 
fader does as well. So we really like the Aeon Effects tab for all the information it gives you as you're working creatively. So I'll store this view, right click views, hit create view, store this one as even better view. Now you can bounce from views of course just by double clicking as you can see this is our first view and if we want to update it a little bit we can make a change and right click and say save current and that will update that view. There's also even a views tab so if we look here it is so we, as we make a view for example and we say create view you'll notice now there's three views there so we can also toggle views by leaving this tab open and simply clicking on a thumbnail in the views tab you can even take a tab and perform a breakout pane so if you right click any tab you can say breakout pane and that's gonna separate that tab or I should say window with all the tabs inside into its own breakout pane so whatever windows is considering the primary output of the video card will be where the preview global preview resides another awesome thing about views is views will remember the layers in your device tree that are visible so if we go here and we hide our cameras and outputs to give us our more space in the device tree we can now create a view based off of that and then let's do another one where we say show all and we'll create a view based off of that and now as we toggle between the views you'll notice that the view will remember which devices are visible and this is great for prioritizing what you need to see in which sequence as you can tell the device tree can be quite busy when you have 10, 20 servers and each of them have their own layer structure. Views will also typically save your orientation of your global preview. So as you move through views, uh, selecting views will select different global preview settings.